Hi guys. Well, about 20 minutes ago, it was a lovely fall day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and now the doom and gloom has returned here on this Friday, October 28th, 2022. So, I have been up staining the tiny house all day and my hands and my, anyway. But now that I am done with that, since it is a Friday, October 28th, uh, we know what that means. It is time for our ecological meltdown roundup rant, where once again we head over to mongabay.com for their weekly, uh, you know, cavalcade of catastrophe taking down this collapsing planet. And, and guys, I, I'm going to work from the bottom up. This was the... <laughs> This was actually the last the, the last story. Here is the the headline on the last story. <clears throat> to boost fish catches, try banning fishing. And there you go. To uh, <laughs> I, I think that's the greatest idea. You, you know, this is some some uh, is that hopium? Let's ban fishing to boost fish catches. There you go. Uh, kind of reminds me of this story in the mainstream media. I was hoping it was going to be a manga bay today about the moose in, uh, in, in Maine dying of all of these ghost ticks. No, it's ghost moose. You know, all of these, these, uh, moose, 90% of the moose calves died this year that were born this spring, 90% mortality. So they're... Their great idea, kind of like uh, boost fishing by banning fishing, it's kind of the reverse, is they're talking about increasing moose numbers by killing more moose. So we have boost moose, yes, yeah, so boost moose numbers by killing more moose. The more moose you kill, the more moose you have on the planet. And with fish, is by banning fishing, you can boost how many fish to catch. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I, I just, uh, if you don't have a sixth sense of humor, you're never going to make it. But we're going to go from fish populations, from collapsing fish and moose populations, to collapsing whale populations. Wrong trend for right whales amid devastating population decline. A newly released estimate suggests that only 340 critically endangered North Atlantic right whales remained at the end of last year, which is a 2.3% decline from the year before. Fewer calves have been born in 2022 so far Corroborating research that suggests that North Atlantic right whale species are becoming less capable of reproducing. And there you go. Uh, here's more about this. So when is the Brazil's election? Is that a... When is it? October... Uh, when is it? October 30th. We will find out whether uh, Lula will save the planet. I've noticed uh, many articles, at least in the mainstream media, that how Lula is going to save the planet from Bozo Nero. It's going to be right down to the wire. It's going to be a photo finish. And uh, we will know in a couple of days... Uh, Okay, so what is the, this is looking at several countries, so in the western Amazon, including several countries, oil blocks, an oil block is, you know, where they lease a big section of the Amazon rainforest to the planet eaters. In the western Amazon, oil blocks eat away at indigenous lands and protected areas 
a total of 1,647 indigenous territories and 52 protected areas are affected by encroaching oil lots. Oh, this is not counting Brazil. In, uh, outside of Brazil, in Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru, some of them subsumed entirely within concessions, meaning that the, you know, these oil blocks completely incorporate these protected areas. So this is Bolivia, Ecuador, and Peru. Uh, there you go. Um, don't forget Colombia. So oil blocks overlap with 1,000 indigenous territories in Peru, 480 in Ecuador, 106 in Colombia, and 57 in Bolivia. Uh, 1,000 indigenous territories in Peru. I, I think Peru's about the size of California. How big are these territories? Anyway, uh, you will not believe, you know, this is their new little quick roundup of uh, stories coming out of sub-Saharan Africa. You will not believe this, that mines... Mines take their toll on nature and communities. Huh. Civil society groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo. We already have two uh, oxymorons in the first half of one sentence. Civil, civil society groups in the Democratic Republic of Congo are demanding the revocation of the license for a Chinese old Chinese owned gold miner operating within operating you know inside one of these protected wildlife reserves that is also home to nomadic indigenous groups <clears throat> up to 90% of mines in south in south africa are not publishing their social commitments to the communities in which they operate in violation of the law. Yeah, uh, how can you publish something that does not exist? I guess you can publish a blank page. Is, is that considered publishing, to publish a, a blank page? Yes, the South African Miners' Social Commitments to Communities that they're destroying. Let's go over to Nigeria. A major Nigerian conglomerate that was granted a major concession for industrial developments back in 2012 has still not compensated displaced residents. Do you think so? It was revealed after the company announced it is now abandoning the project. <laughs> oh god here we go um, so uh, I don't know if you uh, read about this uh, elephant that's just stomped to death this woman over there in Indonesia so uh, maybe related to that so on their YouTube video this week Manga Bay is looking at homeless giants, habitat loss fuels human elephant conflict in northern Sumatra. So uh, let's all cheer on the elephants, uh, stomping elephant poachers to death. Uh, here we go. To get young Filipinos into farming, Initiatives reach them via TikTok. There you go. <laughs> any kid, any teenager watching TikTok, I, I don't care. It, it, it could be any country on the planet. Any teenager, you, you know, who, who watches TikTok, the last thing on the planet they're going to do is become a farmer. 
So now in the Philippines, the average farmer is aged 53. And many of them are discouraging their children from following in their footsteps. Yep, yep, yep. And this is true everywhere. Uh, okay, here we go. How about this one for a no Sherlock uh, statement? For water quality, even a sliver of riverbank forest is better than no riverbank forest. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> we talk, oh, we're going down to Costa Rica. Costa Rica currently has laws in place to protect riparian zones along waterways, but they are unevenly enforced. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as much crap as I give Costa Rica, you know, I spent three years down there, you know, uh, two years writing a book on Costa Rican waterfalls and hot springs. Of course, all the Costa Rican waterfalls and hot springs of now that are in my book have been turned into uh, hydroelectric plants and geothermal plants and all of that. But uh, I, I do have to say it's pretty cool that uh, in Costa Rica, anybody can camp along any navigable river in Costa Rica and anywhere along the ocean, I think to this day, that it is the public, you know, landowners can't kick off people wanting to camp on rivers and the beach in Costa Rica. I'm hoping that's still true. Anyway, <clears throat> gee, you will not believe that there is a thriving online market for Indonesian birds in the Philippines and it's my guess is that there's probably also a thriving online market for Filipino birds in Indonesia. Uh, just taking a wild guess. Okay. Let's skip over the hopium. All right, you will not believe this headline. If I had not read it in Manga Bay, I wouldn't have believed it. I, I never would have, I never would have even thought about it. Did you realize, guys, I want you to listen tonight. Drop everything you're doing and listen to this. This is why we need Manga Bay. Humans are decimating wildlife. I want you to sit there and think about that because you've probably never considered it before. Humans are decimating wildlife. And uh, what this is, this is Manga Bay's review of the, die, the, you know, that World Wildlife Fund Dying Planet Report 2022. So I guess Red is finally limping along with his uh, review uh, anyway, I think we've been through that one. Moving ahead. Uh, moving ahead. <clears throat> uh, let's see, what's the latest news about uh, environmental defenders getting bullets through their head? Uh... Anyway, this is just some interview with some lawyer uh, defending environmental defenders. I can't believe she hasn't gotten a bullet through her head. You know, talking about how the lawyer uh, representing these people are getting death threats. Okay. I am proud to say, guys, I have never played a video game on a computer since the day I was born. Never done it. I, this Pac-Man, I, I remember something called Pac-Man from the early 1980s that gobbled up 
that's the last video game I played on a computer. Video gaming. Uh, good Lord, if, or, if you know, Orwell would certainly ha have added video games right in there with what are the big four? Uh, alcohol, professional sports, popular music, and pornography video games would certainly be uh, the one of the top ways you, you know that this planet is turning into a planet of clueless morons. Playing dangerously, the environmental impact of video gaming consoles like other consumer electronics can you say this computer and this camera uh, filming this like other consumer electronics video game consoles require complex supply chains that rely on the mining of metals and rare earth elements the production of new plastics and highly specialized manufacturing processes linking the industry to oversized carbon emissions. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, who would have thunk it? I'm sure all those TikTok watching video game playing teenagers are really concerned. Uh, okay, here is a, a, an interview with this guy over there in uh, Nepal who studies mollusks. You know, this is land snails. And this is the, the quote, title quote from the interview. Quote, a mollusk is as important as a tiger. Uh, as a matter of fact, no, a mollusk is not as important as a tiger. A Nepali land snail, which I'm quite sure are getting ready to go the, you know, the way of where the tiger's going. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not, you know what I'm saying, I, I'm not talking trash about uh, land snails in Nepal, but no, they are not as important as a tiger. Th this is kind of like this BS argument, you know, that these militant vegans use, that that I've had used on me. Why do you sit here and 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 you know talk about uh, palm oil and tigers and elephants and all of that? while you sit there and eat chicken and pork, that there's no difference between a chicken, between a domestic farm-raised chicken and a wild tiger or elephant or dolphin. Anybody, anybody who actually believes that for one minute is so clueless that I, I, I just roll my eyes when I hear, when I hear this argument that people who eat domestically farmed uh, meat are uh, every bit as guilty as elephant poachers. Shut up. Anyway, getting off off track here. Will you believe this? Now, we just heard about uh, something uh, 10 years later that these people still haven't seen the more than 14 years since the discovery of the Marange Diamond, oh, in Zimbabwe, more than 14 years since the discovery of the Marange Diamond Fields in Zimbabwe one of the world's largest diamond producing projects, relocated residents living near the mines are still living in poverty. The government and the mining companies promised them homes, electricity, water, employment, social services, <coughs> and compensation. Uh... Mangabe last reported on this 
in 2016. Not nothing has changed. Uh, and of course, the rivers are polluted and all of that. And I want to drink all of my limeade and not have any mix for my margaritas here when I finish this rant. Here we go. This is this classic story about this BS FSC, the Forest Stewardship Council, uh, where deforesters, deforesters once blocked from FSC certification, get a new shot. There you go. The FSC has adopted a number of significant changes, uh, chief among them moving its cutoff date for eligibility from 1994 to 2020. Uh, so with the new change, logging companies that have cleared forests since 1994, but before 2020, will be allowed to obtain certification from the body. You know, meaning that we don't clear forests. So they, for 26, uh, 25 years, they could have been out there bulldozing forest. But as long as the, they've been good, good little boys and girls since 2020, uh, they get a pass and get their little stamp Yes. To qualify, however, companies will have to restore, restore the forest and provide remedy for social harms done between 1994 and 2020. Oh, yes. Uh, critics say the new rule rewards known deforesters. <laughs> which is exactly what it does. Okay. To protect the southern ocean, you know, meaning around in the Ant, some of us call it the Antarctic Ocean, leaders must act now. No, to protect the southern ocean and every other ocean, leaders needed to act about 50 years ago. Uh, and they're talking about, uh, in this one, they were talking about, about krill, about Antarctic krill, uh, underpinning the food web. Uh, the commercial krill fishery produces fish meal for pets, people, and aquaculture. Uh, and this is, as we were talking about last week, the uh, assault on the Antarctic krill uh, heading into overdrive for these sustainable fish farms. From Antarctica to Arctica. Arctic sea ice loss to increase strong El Nino events linked to extreme weather. The frequency of strong El Nino events could increase by 35% by the end of the century as Arctic sea ice begins to melt out completely in the summer. Uh, El Ninos uh, often trigger devastating droughts, floods, and cyclones around the globe. The findings provide more evidence that Arctic warming is affecting weather in other parts of the world. Uh, other recent studies have found that sea ice loss is causing rapid acidification of the Arctic Ocean and more extreme precipitation and flooding in Svalbard. Isn't that where they have the Doomsday Vault? Uh, You will not believe this, guys. Would you believe for one minute? This, this has got to be fake news. Has to be fake news. The Bangladeshian government, the Bangladesh 
government has failed to implement its electronic waste management regulations a year after introducing a new rule that was 10 years in the making. <laughs> oh, good Lord, do you think so? Um, so here is trying to track the moves of Asian forestry companies in Central Africa. Uh, this is called uh, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. An array of Asia-based forestry companies, meaning, you, you know, loggers, operate in Central Africa, including the countries of Cameroon, Gabon, and Equatorial Guinea. Do you think so? Uh... Europe, Europe considers large-scale seaweed farming while environmental effects are unknown. The European Commission is planning large-scale industrial farming of seaweed across the continent's shores. The goal is to farm 8 million metric tons of seaweed annually by 2030, up from the current annual farm production of about 3,000 metric tons. So, 2022, 3,000 tons of seaweed. 2030, 8 million metric tons of seaweed will be hauled out of, this is just the shores of Europe, yes. Proponents tout industrial level seaweed farming as a sustainable form of farming that can produce food, chemicals, pharmaceuticals, and don't forget biofuels, which is what this is all about. It's about biofuels, guys, and sequester carbon. There's just one catch, however. The potential ecological impacts of large-scale industrial seaweed farming have yet to be assessed. Well, we're going to find out, aren't we? And so if you're a, a, it's a, any sort of wild animal in Europe eating seaweed, your days are numbered. And that brings us back to where we started to boost fish catches, try banning fishing. A new study has found that the Papahana Ubo Kakaea Marine National Monument in Hawaii, the world's largest contiguous marine protected area, increased the catch rates of yellowfin and big eye tuna in nearby fisheries due to a spillover effect. Yes, between 2016 and 2019, catches of yellowfin tuna increased 54% in waters adjacent to the MPA, and catch rates for big eye rose by 12%. Uh, however, both studies, both studies suggest that the best results come from fully protected MPAs that do not allow fishing at all and that under protected MPAs, meaning those that do allow fishing, yield, quote, little to no social or ecological benefits. There you go. So anyway, is, uh, yes, little dog, did you survive another Manga Bay Roundup rant? With that, we have gone full circle in our chronicle of the collapse. I think the temperature has dropped about 10 degrees here. 
since I started this rant. The little dog is cold and ready for his dinner. And you probably have about 10 more minutes to get that chippy like that. The chippies are probably going to bed. It was 27 degrees when I woke up this morning. 27 degrees uh, at 7.30 this morning. And I was t-shirt and barefooted at 2 o'clock this afternoon. But uh, I think it's time to head in and crank up the heater in the tiny house. What do you think? Get out there and crank up your heater while you still can. Old man winter is on the way. I need to carve my jack-o'-lantern. We will see you in November at Manga Bay. Bye, guys.